The guy who had told me about the location of the dump said that he had found whiskey bottles here previously and that they had sold for tens of thousands of dollars. And who knew there could be cases of them in the old dump. Yes! Yes! Hello, my name is Brent, and we are here at Cerro Gordo. Cerro Gordo is an abandoned mining town that was once the largest producer of silver for the state of California. But for the past 100 years or so, it's sat uh, pretty much abandoned. And this week, I am searching for treasure, but not treasure back in the mines like I normally do. Treasure's in an old dump. Earlier this year, when the American Hotel burned down, it also unfortunately burned down the ice house. And I remember one of the first days after the hotel and ice house burned down, somebody that was very familiar with the property was trying to cheer me up. They were trying to give me some good news. And they let me know about the location of the dump and said, hey Brent, you know, the things in there otherwise would never have been found. And it helped a little bit. You know, it was some type of bright point in an otherwise very dark situation. And so over the last few months, I've been digging up the dump. The American Hotel was built in 1871. When it opened, it didn't have refrigeration. After a number of years, they opened an ice house, which used to stand right there. But they built that ice house on top of what was the original dump for the hotel. So for the first few years, everything from the hotel was dumped over there. For over a hundred years, nobody's been able to get underneath the ice house because it was standing. But now that it has burned, I'm gonna dig underneath the ice house, break up the concrete pad, dig there, and see what was in the original dump. Yesterday, I took a shovel and I dug a very little amount. I dug that much. Not even a foot underneath the pad, and that's what came up. Old plates, bones, and again, that was after one foot of digging. So look at this pad. This pad is 30 feet by 15 feet, maybe. So I'm going to dig underneath this and hopefully capture some treasures that would have otherwise never been found. Not even five minutes in, as you can see, there's a bunch of bone, a bunch of porcelain, and some bottles. You know, this one's the bottom of one. This is like a cork stopper. There's stuff there. I just gotta find it. So for the first step for me was just breaking up these two concrete pads. And I wanted to be really delicate about it. I didn't want to disturb any underneath. So I took a sledgehammer to it. And so over the course of a couple weeks, I was just sledgehammering into this old concrete that I've been told that concrete gets harder as it gets older. And I believe that because it was definitely a workout. You know, who I didn't need the gym then because I was just for hours each day hammering the sledgehammer into the old concrete. Day one finds, 
a bunch of bones, porcelain, some glasses. Now I'm just breaking up this concrete to get underneath more. This pad is huge, you know? It goes all the way over there. I feel like there's gonna be some stuff under here. Just cracking the surface and finding this already. I hope so. Stay tuned. Many days to come. A lot of the concrete broken up with the loader. Now what I'm gonna do is break up the rest by hand just to be a little bit more delicate with it and then put it in the loader and then dump it over there. But once we get all this concrete out of here, I'll have free reign to look for riches and treasure. So I wanna get this stuff out of here. The main thing I was looking for was whiskey bottles because the guy who had told me about the location of the dump said that he had found whiskey bottles here previously and that they had sold for tens of thousands of dollars. And who knew, there could be cases of them in the old dump. You know, whenever I'm looking for these things, whether it's jeans, which obviously I'm obsessed with, or anything I find in the mines, the intention is never to sell them. It's never to, you know, put them on sale and make some money from it. And I think the only reason I'd say the value of them is because that's an interest point for people. You know, it kind of pegs the, how rare these things are and so for me finding these bottles is, became a quest much like the jeans where if I could find them I could display them and future generations can learn from them here at Cerro Gordo because for me every item everything that I find every rock every scrap even there's this bone laying by my foot this bone tells a story and if I can understand the story of this bone it usually leads into a segue into a larger story about the history of Cerro Gordo Cerro Gordo has been very well maintained, but the reality is lots of stuff has been lost from Cerro Gordo. There was an owner in the 50s and 60s that basically sold off a lot of the town to try to pay his bills. He sold off the kitchen flooring of the hotel to pay some bills. He let people take anything they wanted from the town in buckets. And so Cerro Gordo artifacts are becoming rarer and rarer as we go on. So the idea, the thought, the possibility of finding new artifacts for Cerro Gordo to keep here to add to the collection is always really exciting. So it means a lot to me that you guys check out these videos because it's another way of, you know, broadcasting the history of this place that I think is really important. And so my thought was if I could find some bottles in the old dump, I would set aside part of the new hotel to create a small museum, put the bottles there, explain that the bottles had come from the old dump, and that's obviously an entry point into the history of the American Hotel. Sometimes there's logos on them and it's cool because then you can kind of try to figure out where they're from. Oh my God, is it a full one? Ho ho! Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce bottle. The glass from the fire, maybe it's just like melted. Solid. Baker and Co. Ironstone, China.
Yes! Yes! This is cool. If you look at it as Powell, almost like brandy or something. But it's probably it's clay. So this is the collection so far of full bottles. Got two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight. There's a bunch more in that bucket over there. But collections adding to it. Gonna keep going. Hopefully find some more things. Oh yeah, this is cool. The stopper was still in it. Boom. All right, little break from the digging, playing with the cats. It's crazy how fast they grow. You know, it's like they were kittens and I was feeding them with my hand, you know, a month ago. And now, they're like full grown adults and cats. Aren't you? I'm getting them vaccinated. We had a really kind volunteer that came and offered to vaccinate them and so, Four of them in an L are in LA right now getting vaccinated. And she's gonna bring them back and bring these guys there. She just couldn't take seven at once, I guess. Cause she had other cats or something. Hey Gordo. But I think we have some of the names. This is Gordo. Gordo's the little gray guy. He's the smallest, the run of the group. Probably the most needy. This is Lola, named after Lola Travis, of course. And then I believe the other one is uh, Mr. Rice and Beans is the tentative name. We'll see. Oh, what do you think, guys? Which one's your favorite? This one? No, that's a yawn. Oh, you like that? This one? Also, thank you to whatever viewer bought this scratch post for me. It's going to definitely save all my furniture in this house. And it showed up, and I appreciate that. And Gordo loves it, and the cats love it. Oh, hello, we have the whole games here. What do you guys think? Smells like history, huh? Another fun fact about bottles is if you see something like this, there's a wine bottle, you know, push up at the bottom. And the reason is it allowed the sed sediment to fall to the bottom of the bottles. And so there's your tidbit of the day. What do you think, guys? This bottle? Gordo? No. Okay. This bottle? Yes. Lola? Oh, oh, purring. But yeah, it's nice. The cats have been a great addition. You know, growing up, I've always been a dog guy. I had dogs all my life. And so cats are a new thing for me, but I get it. I get you cat people. I see why you like them. And I can't wait to see them grow up and become, much like the bottles, become part of Sarah Gordo's history. All right, so after the hand digging, these are the full bottles I'm left with. I brought them back to my cabin to research them a little bit more. I'm still gonna do some more digging with uh, the machine now that I've gotten through kind of the softer dirt that has a lot of stuff in it. Maybe we'll find a couple more things, maybe not, but we'll see. So as you can see, the hotel site's changed a little bit since I started digging for the bottles. This is a little hotel update then too. We're gonna build a basement, a full basement. So I'm taking down the dirt quite a bit over where the pad is. After I dug through the first two feet of the dirt, it got to the point where I wasn't finding very much stuff. So I thought maybe that's as far as the treasures would go. And so to expedite things, to not hold up the digging of the American Hotel anymore, I started using a loader. So I take buckets and I created this screening thing that was made out of fence and some old pieces of piano that I actually found. So this is obviously a function of having to work with what you got. And so this is the sifter I've created, where basically I take a half bucket or so, dump it in, sift through. And as you can see, I've done maybe 10, 12 buckets of this so far, haven't found anything. And so that leads me to believe that most of the dump stuff was in the first two, three feet of the dirt. And this is more just a precautionary thing, making sure I didn't miss anything. Pretty much all I'm finding is big rocks, as you can see. 
And so I'll sift through some more today, show you guys how I was doing that. And maybe we'll find something, maybe not. And then all this dirt has to get pushed over because where I'm, you can see over there, basement needs to get dug. This is a lot of the miscellaneous stuff that I found. Some of the broken pieces of glass and pottery. I found a lot of bottlenecks. And so what I'm gonna do now is just sort through them all in here in the museum because doing it in my cabin would make it pretty messy, but it's cool. All right, this is the final take. We got the stoppers. These are super cool. Most of them are Liam Perrins, so for the whoosh, whoosh whatever sauce. There's a bunch of those. Some bottlenecks. Some of them even have the stoppers in them, which I think is really cool. Broken glass. Some with some even label on it still. China ceramics. Then the full bottles. The stars of the show. The cream of the crop. The museum quality items. So I think obviously those will go in the in museum. These we might make like a mosaic out of, you know, allow some artists to come and do their interpretation. Cause I think it'd be really cool to keep them in some way, you know, as kind of a nod to the hotel. So that's the plan. There's tons more bones, but to be honest, I don't need any more bones in here. So those are kind of still where they were, but Exciting times, more to come. I'm excited about finding more stuff now. You know, you kind of get that, that itch to find some more stuff. So that's what's coming next. All right, there's a little bit of the dump left maybe, but this might be it. We ended up with two, four, six, eight, ten, about 11 or 12 full bottles, which isn't bad. And now what I want to do is just go in here and do a little bit of research, try to learn a little bit about them and yeah, all of these bottles I'll put in the museum of the new hotel, you know? They're bottles that wouldn't have been found otherwise. And so they're part of the history of Cerro Gordo, you know? Who knows why, when the last time the guy took some Worcestershire, I don't know how to pronounce that. If you guys don't know how to pronounce the Lee and Perrins, Worcestershire's sauce, you figure some guy 150 years ago, put this on probably not the best meat at Cerro Gordo, and now it's here. 
So just going to learn a little bit about these and I'll be back soon with my findings. So you can tell the age of the bottle in a number of ways. You know, the color, markings on it, but probably the easiest way is the lip. And you have to figure, you know, before 1890 or so, glass blowing was a profession. So, you know, imagine a guy blowing the glass in and when he would come out, they would put on the lip afterwards. It's called the applied lip. And if you see there's stuff like the square applied lip and you can see, see there's a little excess underneath it. It's obviously they added this square band after the bottle was done. Or you have stuff kind of like the band there. See how it's added on afterwards? And most of that, the applied things are like 1840 to 1870-ish. So you have to figure all the ones that have these afterthought lips on them are from that era, which makes sense, you know, given the dump was active during that era as well. Between 1850 and 1880, the most common color for bottles was aqua. Clear wasn't really a common one yet. And prior to that, it was mainly amber. But during that era, which most of these seem to be from, aqua was the color. So if you notice, almost all these bottles are aqua in color. So that would say, you know, 1850 to 1880s or so, which is true. And another one that I think is really cool is this cork. You see that we have that there? And so most of these are, yeah, I would say 1840 to 1880s. So that's what, 180 to this years ago. And so to 150 years ago. But these two bottles that are the same bottle, just this one has a cork, both say J Walker's VB on the bottom. And after a little research, it turns out VB stands for vinegar bitters. So vinegar bottles. And these seem to be from about 1849, so, you know, about that old. Pretty common, unfortunately. I see some listings on eBay for them for about 30 bucks. So these two, Saul, vinegar bottles. Next we have this. This stone thing says Powell, and I thought it said brandy on it, but it seemed like a, a weird opening for a brandy bottle. It turns out this is a William Powell Bristol Stoneware Pottery Crock from the 1850s, and this, 50 bucks on eBay. So again, not a not a home run, but again, just something that'll be really cool to put into the hotel museum. We'll move this over to the right side of the table. Up, we got this stoneware beer bottle, and it seems that these two-tone stoneware bottles were from about the 1870s to 1880s. They were imported from Great Britain. Um, it was crazy because back then all the beer bottles had to be made by hand. So you figure all these were made by hand. There's probably tons of these around Cerro Gordo considering how much beer was drank up here. eBay shows about 25 bucks. Solved, that will go in the solved pile over here. And also, if you're a bottle expert out there and you can correct me on this stuff, please do. But to my knowledge, this is what we're finding. All right, next up we have these two bottles, which are almost identical. And this took some context clues to get to because there's not really markings on them, but Given the fact that they're next to a hotel with the kitchen from the 1870s, turns out these are spice bottles. So I found some online that are very similar. So this could have been any of your household spices would have been stored in these and up in the cupboard. And that's why they're pretty generic, but two spice bottles, 30, 50 bucks maybe. These two will knock off the list. They're both Lee and Perrin's bottle. They're Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> And admittedly, that's a very difficult word for me to pronounce. I actually just Googled how to pronounce it. I got a bunch of those and these same range, you know, 20, 50 bucks, maybe if they're in really good shape. So we'll add these to the found collection. Well, these three are a conundrum. They have no identifying features on them. They have the applied lip for sure, but no real label, no markings. They're all aqua. There are various sizes, that, that, and that. So I don't know. So if you are a bottle expert, or if you have any educated guesses, I'm all ears. This is the museum here at Cerro Gordo. And it's crazy to think six months ago, these glass cases were empty. And as I search through the mines or search around the property, I find things and just add them to it. 
And now when people come, they can see stuff and not just old stuff, you know, stuff that was from this property that has a connection to this property. And I think that, that's why these bottles are so awesome for me because they're from here and there's a story to them. You know, I'm going to create space somewhere in this with a little plaque about the fire and about the dump and how, how these bottles were consumed in the American hotel at Cerro Gordo and what that means. And so that's what, that's what keeps me going. You know, it's easy to think, Hey, why did you spend months finding bottles that you can buy on eBay for 50 bucks, but you can't buy these bottles on eBay for 50 bucks. These are from Cerro Gordo. You know, they're from here. They deserve to be here. And I just, I love that. It just keeps me going. You know, I think people sometimes ask me if I'll sell them anything that I find, you know, cause I found a bunch of cool stuff. And the answer is no, you know, it all stays here. And for me, it's just about giving a shit. You know, I think that's what it comes down to. And maybe some of you will resonate with that. Maybe some of you won't, but like, when you can tell somebody cares, that there's an intention, that there's a care put into things, then you appreciate it, or at least I do. And for me, I hope, you know, people come and they see not just, you know, three ax picks that could have been seen in any antique store, but somebody who gave a shit enough to keep them around here and display them for future generations. Because these bottles might not be cool, you know, only be 150 years old, but if they stick around for 300 years, these are going to be some really cool and important pieces of history. And that's just the timeline I think about things on. I think about them in centuries, even not just decades or years. And so if you think on that timeline, like I do it about Cerro Gordo, then anything you find here from the past is interesting and it's historic and it deserves to be preserved. Like if you're familiar with the channel, you'll see stuff like this jacket that I found in one of the mines that I was able to recover. These two boxes are both from the 200 level that had we not wiggled our way into, these would have been lost to the elements, you know? And to me, that's cool. There's something to it that this is from an important part of Cerro Gordo's history and it was preserved and it's staying here. And so I guess not to sound like too much like Indiana Jones, but it belongs in a museum, you know? And these pants, I found these pants in a neighboring mine I think the guy that last rolled up those pant legs isn't around, but the pants are still here and hopefully many generations can come learn from them. Just like they'll learn from these bottles, I hope. And this pile over here, so this pile is a pile that I haven't even sorted through yet. I got these out of the mine. I think I showed it in the six or seven month update, but I found this strap of denim, a bunch of old dynamite instructions, which is crazy, you know? These are instructions that could have been lost to the elements that have stayed back in the mine, but now they're here. I'm gonna try to preserve them. Canteen, more dynamite stuff. So this channel is about preserving history, appreciating history. And that's why I bought Cerro Gordo. Maybe that's why you're watching the channel. Maybe you just watch the channel to see me almost die in mines. This is a piece of Galena from Cerro Gordo. See how shiny it is? So heavy. You know, this rock, a lot of people lost their lives looking for this rock. And from that, you can tell a whole story about mining and history in Cerro Gordo. So tomorrow I'm going into the Bouillon mine, which could lead into the 200 level, which is very exciting. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment below of other things you want to see. And I'll see you guys next week and maybe one day you'll see these thank you so much for subscribing to the channel it really means a lot it's really cool to see this community developing that i get to kind of tap into each week helps you know when you're up on the mountain by yourself but anything you want to see in the future videos let me know in the comments below uh subscribe if you haven't already share this video around and just again thank you guys so much so till next time I'm signing out here at Cerro Gordo and uh, I'll see you next week.